Okay, it's time for a little education. Um, I'm getting really tired. Um, let me oh, well, let me back up first. Um, I do a lot of buying and selling of jet skis on uh, Craigslist and boats and such like that. Uh, and I'm getting really tired of seeing ads and seeing people get uh, taken advantage of with the no title thing on Craigslist uh, or no title, no big deal, go get yourself a, a lost title. Uh, in the state of Texas, now this is in the state of Texas, so if you guys are watching this and you're outside of the state of Texas, your state could be completely different. But in the state of Texas, you cannot file for a lost title unless you are the original owner or the titled owner of the boat. Uh, you can't file for a lost title if you just bought the boat from a guy and uh, he didn't have it or he lost it or something like that or he never transferred into his name. You cannot do that. That also goes for if the guy has the title and he never transferred into his name but then he wants to leapfrog it to you. Uh, that's also a big no-no. Um, there is not just the title that you need to be able to make your transfer uh, at the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Now, notice I said Texas Parks and Wildlife, not the DPS or the DMV, because in the state of Texas, they actually do not do any registration for boats. Now, trailers are different, but boats are not done through the, through the DMV. They're done through the Texas Parks and Wildlife. And all their offices are scattered throughout. I mean, they're kind of all over Texas and they're usually not very close to anybody. Uh, mine are kind of way out in the country. But you don't only need the title, you actually have to have another piece of paper called a PW-143A also. Uh, and all of these have to be signed. And if you have an outboard, it makes it even worse. There's a title on the outboard also. But I'm just talking just a standard everyday boat, you're trying to title a hull uh, for that reason. Now, you have to have the PW-143 signed by the title owner and the title also to be able to transfer it. So if some guy just hands you a title with his he, you know, supposedly bought it from Joe Blow and his name is John Doe, it isn't going to work because it's not his name and he can't sign the PW-143. Apparently, Texas changed these laws. Uh, you used to be able to get a uh, bonded or lost title uh, a few years back, but they changed them recently due to uh, high thefts after hurricanes. That's what I understand. Being a person who uh, buys and sells jet skis a lot and other types of boats, um, I've tried to uh, see if there's any possible way and tried every type of uh, circumstance to try to get a title for a boat that was uh, either one was lost or uh, it didn't have one or something like that. And it is very, very difficult, uh, if not impossible. There are a few extenuating circumstances that you can get a bonded title. Now, usually when a, a title is lost, uh, these boats are probably pretty cheap or jet skis are pretty cheap. You know, we're talking under $1,000. Um, in order to get a bonded title, you have to go and get an insurance company to back the fact that you're basically saying that you own this vehicle and you bought it out, you know, fair and square from somebody, but the title has been lost. No one can find the owner and stuff like that. Um, vehicles use this quite often. If you buy an abandoned vehicle or something like that, you can go get a... Uh, a bonded title which says you know what you pay an X amount of money which it can be kind of high I think the, I did a bonded title on a Camaro back uh, about five years ago when I rebuilt one and uh, the title was lost and I had to get a, a bonded title I think it cost me about 1200 bucks uh, it kind of goes by the bait the value of the vehicle I do believe I can't remember uh, since it's been so long however uh, with boats it's a completely different story you have to have a lot of other extenuating circumstances like if you bought it in an auction, like at a uh, storage unit, uh, or a foreclosure, or a uh, sale like that. But let me show you something. The, the circumstances and the requirements for that is huge. Let me see if I can get this camera to, there we go. All right, so this is called a sold under statutory lien foreclosure. And what this is, is a checklist of all the stuff that you're gonna need. Uh, so if you bought it from a storage facility lien, or you bought the vessel, you need to have the PW-143, uh, you need to have an affidavit of statutory lien foreclosure sale by the self-service storage, which is another, it's called a PWD 309B. Uh, you need to have an agreement contract for storage and repair record service, which means you need to have the original contract for the storage facility that it was purchased from. You need to have an ownership verification from a state government agency. So you have to track down who bought it originally, and it has to match the person that had it stored there. Uh, and then you have to have an evidence of compliance with Texas Property Code Section 590445. I don't know what the hell that means, but that you, that what I'm guessing, and I can probably go look it up and everybody can Google it themselves, is it means that um, you basically is you, you gained it 
uh, possession of it legally. You didn't steal it or anything like that. Um, so you, you've got, oh, you've got to do notice of tenant or self storage facility lien. So they have to have the notification to the original tenants. You have to have the noti notice to owners of record for self storage facility lien, which is telling that that's when they are going to, uh, um, uh, sell it. And then you have to provide a photocopy of both newspaper publications and public sale for self storage facility lien. So all self storage, when they sell them, like in the storage wars that you see on TV, they will produce a uh, newspaper ad or a Craigslist ad, and you have to have that ad. If you don't, go back to square one. So that's how hard it is. So there's all kinds of, there's a garage mechanics lien. You got to have that also. That's another way you can get it, but there has to be proof and receipts and all kinds of stuff to be able to get it. I've heard of guys buying these from marinas and they are able to get a, uh, a, 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 a title because they have the garage mechanic lien. But if you buy it from just um, somebody, Joe Blow, down the street that's not a mechanic and doesn't have any proof that he bought it originally, you're pretty much SOL. So this is just kind of one of those things. You've got to cover your butt. Uh, don't buy a boat in Texas. Now, once again, this is Texas. Don't buy a boat in Texas if it does not have a title. The chances of you getting a title are very slim. And what irritates me most is that these boats end up dumped on the side of the road. You go buy a boat, you think you're going to be able to repair it, and no, it just gets tossed. Uh, I have somebody that I know that bought a boat like that. They got it for about 400 bucks, and they can't get a title now. And, I, and it's just sitting in storage, it's just not being used. You will not be able to get a title. It is impossible unless you can get the original owner uh, uh, on the line and get them to go down to the place with you and file for a lost title. And we all know who that, how that never happens. So anyway, guys, please do not buy boats without titles in Texas. I know I've told, said that a thousand times. Um, it's really, really difficult and it's just not worth the hassle. So please, this is my public service announcement. Do not do it.